Just a quick reminder, from now until the morning of the 19th, you can use code IMMORTAL to get 30% off your entire order over on gfuel.com. So if you do want to pick up a new tub, shaker cup, or starter pack, now is definitely the best time to do so. And now on to today's video. Back in Call of Duty Ghosts, we got what has since become one of my all-time favorite weapons in all of Call of Duty history, that of course being the Honey Badger Assault Rifle. The Honey Badger in Ghosts stood out not only because it was a pretty effective weapon, but it also had a built-in suppressor. So rather than using one of your attachment spots to equip a suppressor, you already had that option on there. It was definitely a top tier weapon back then, and like I said, it is now one of my all-time favorites. So when I heard you could make the Honey Badger as a secret weapon variant here in Modern Warfare, I immediately got to grinding so I could build the setup. And today I'm breaking it down for you guys as I show you how to make what closely resembles the Honey Badger from Ghosts via the Gunsmith. But before we jump into that, if you are new to the channel, we are always building new secret weapon variants like the Honey Badger, and also covering the latest news and intel in the world of Call of Duty. So if you do want to stay up to date with all of that, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. And of course, if you enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like rating on it as it would be much appreciated. And now let's get into the Honey Badger build guide here in Modern Warfare. So first and foremost, unlike quite a few of the other weapon variants that we've done in the past, like for instance the MP5K, the RPK, and also the AUG, the Honey Badger is not a weapon that is as easily created. You know, there's no outright attachment saying Honey Badger stock or anything like that, so this build is not a perfect one-for-one -one copy of the Honey Badger that we all know and love, but it is pretty much the closest thing you can get to it, and we'll be comparing how it feels to the original version of the gun a bit later on into the video. But of course, to actually start this conversion kit, you first need to have the M13 Assault Rifle unlocked, as it is the base of this entire conversion. Now, you don't need to have it maxed out at weapon level 69, nice. but you will need to have it leveled a decent bit to actually have all the mandatory attachments for the Honey Badger variant unlocked. That said, the first attachment you'll want to add onto your M13 to get this conversion started is the Tempest Cyclone Barrel, which is the second barrel attachment you end up unlocking. Now this is, without a doubt, the obvious choice for the barrel on this conversion kit, because the Tempest Cyclone actually offers a built-in suppressor, which of course is resemblance of the classic Honey Badger which shared the same feature. By nature, the M13 does not come stock with any kind of sound suppression, so this attachment is definitely essential in the variant setup. On top of the built-in suppressor, the Tempest Cyclone barrel also offers an increase to the bullet velocity, however it does end up decreasing the aim down sight speed which is a minor drawback, especially if you do want to use this as a rush heavy type of weapon. But regardless, that is the first attachment you'll need for this conversion kit. Next up I've got the GI Mini Reflex on my setup. This attachment is totally based on preference, you do not necessarily need it, but one, the M13 iron sights look nothing like the original iron sights that the Honey Badger had, and two, I really don't think that the base iron sight on the M13 is really all that good. So an optic attachment is a must for me, and the GI Mini Reflex is one that I do enjoy using. Unfortunately, it does also end up decreasing the ADS speed a bit according to the in-game breakdown. After that, we then have the FFS Close Quarters Stock Attachment on here as well, and this is another mandatory attachment, as the FFS Close Quarters Stock really helps bring out the look of the Honey Badger, as it had a very similar looking stock back in Ghosts. Now, this stock attachment is also pretty convenient to use in general, as it increases your aim down sight speed, so that will ideally counter the decreases from the previous attachments in that respect. But on the downside, this stock does end up decreasing the aiming stability, so you might notice a bit more sway when you are aiming down sights and trying to stay on target, especially in those long range engagements. Then I've got the Ranger foregrip on my setup as well, and much like the GI Mini Reflex sight, this one also just really comes down to preference. But as you'll notice by the time this setup is all said and done, the M13, or the Honey Badger rather, has a decent amount of recoil, so the added recoil control and the aiming stability that this foregrip offers is a pretty big bonus in my own opinion. However, this attachment does also decrease the overall aim walking movement speed, and also the aim down sight speeds too, which is somewhat noticeable, but honestly, I would rather have less recoil than anything else in this case. 
Then the fifth and final attachment that I've got on my Honey Badger setup is the 300 Blackout 30 round mags ammunition attachment, which once again is going to be one of those quote unquote mandatory ones that you will really need in order to really transform this weapon into the Honey Badger. Now the 300 blackout rounds end up increasing your damage range and they also offer no visible tracers and no enemy skulls when taking out the opposition, which really adds a pretty cool stealth factor to this entire setup. And that's honestly one of the more unique attachments that we actually have in all of modern warfare. However, these mags do also decrease the weapon's bullet velocity and also the recoil control, both of which you will end up noticing in game, even with that ranger foregrip on there. So with all of that said, we've got our five attachments on the M13, and with these on there, it does essentially become the makeshift honey badger, if you will. And as I mentioned, it is really the Tempest Cyclone Barrel, the FFS Close Quarters Stock, and the Blackout 300 mags that are the true game changers in this setup. As you'll notice on the stat sheet in game, with all of these attachments on the M13, the accuracy, the damage, the range, and the control all increase a decent amount, whereas the mobility decreases ever so slightly, and the fire rate remains untouched. So all things considered, you might look at the stat sheet and say, hey, that actually looks like it'd be a pretty solid weapon setup, right? And well, yeah, on paper it does look pretty good, I'll admit. But in game, this conversion kit just didn't really feel all that effective. The M13 is a pretty solid weapon in game as is. I honestly think it's a pretty underrated assault rifle compared to say the Kilo or even the M4, but this particular setup just did not feel all that great in game. At a distance, this thing is an absolute hit marker machine. The M13 in general really isn't super great in long range engagements, but this setup specifically felt pretty lackluster. Now up close it is definitely not too too bad, I'd say it's about on par with the M13 with various other attachments on it, and most of the other assault rifles in general, especially when you are hitting headshots with it as that headshot multiplier does really impact the weapon's overall effectiveness. But when compared to the M13 with other attachment setups and some of the other assault rifles in the game, I just don't think the Honey Badger was anything to write home about, which was kind of surprising. If you played Call of Duty Ghosts and you used the Honey Badger back in the day, you probably remember just how good of a weapon it really was. You know, you could rush around with it, you could play distance with it, it was incredibly versatile and effective in general. And the same can't really be said about the M13 Honey Badger variant here. I will say, pending some alterations to the setup, you could have a little more success with it, however you would have a much less accurate build of the true Honey Badger. I definitely think the ADS speed could use some work. Honestly, I initially had gone with the stippled grip tape instead of the foregrip in order to actually help that ADS speed, but I found that the recoil in those medium to long range fights was a bit too much of a hindrance. So that ADS speed could certainly be improved upon, and I also noticed you run out of ammo so incredibly fast with only a 30 round magazine. So triple kills or any decent amount of kills in a short period of time can be a bit tricky as well. Unfortunately, because we are using that 300 blackout magazine, there's not really too much you can do in the way of the magazine size, so I guess that's just a uh, necessary sacrifice. That said though, this weapon absolutely offers more potential than the AK-74U, the M16, and I want to even say the MP5K, since it does have a lot more range. However, the AUG with the 5.56 rounds, the AK-12, and also the RPK, I would say can all be seen as more effective weapons to use in a wider variety of engagements. So with that, I'd honestly just rate this weapon as, uh, meh, nothing too crazy. Going into this conversion kit, I was pretty excited to see if this variant could hang with one of my all-time favorite weapons in Call of Duty. And while the weapon may look like the OG Honey Badger, that same dominant feel from back in the day is just not there. Anyways, with all of that being said, that is effectively how you can build the Honey Badger, or the closest possible thing to it, via the gunsmith here in Modern Warfare. As always, if you have any other secret weapon variants you'd like me to do a guide for, be sure to drop those suggestions down in the comments below. If you found the video helpful, or if you just simply enjoyed it, let me know by dropping a like rating on it, as it would be much appreciated. And of course, if you are new here and you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the world of Call of Duty, including all the latest news and intel, updates and leaks, and pretty much everything else in between, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. That way you'll always know when I post a new video. As I mentioned in the intro, from now until the morning of the 19th, my G Fuel discount code IMMORTAL has been boosted to a 30% discount. 
So if you do want to snag anything from the G Fuel site, now is definitely the best time to do so thanks to those increased savings, so be sure to check out that link down below. Until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.